Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. A 40-year-old woman comes to the OPD with fever with chills and triggers. On examination looks pale and has clubbing of fingers. Asphaltation reveled mid-diastolic murmur. Cardiac echo was taken, and it showed the following finding. What is the diagnosis? Hurry up. The time is running. The answer is infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis. It is the infection of cardiovascular structures by microbes mainly involving heart valves, atrial and ventricular anticardium and prosthetic valves or pacemakers. Now let's see the classification of infective endocarditis. Acute bacterial endocarditis is of two types. Hospital acquired is by Staphylococcus aureus. And community acquired is by Streptococcus. Subacute bacterial endocarditis is caused by Streptococcus viridens. Prosthetic valve endocarditis caused by coagulus negative Streptococcus. Or Streptococcus viridens. Right-sided endocarditis and IV drug abusers is caused by Staphylococcus aureus. In patients with patent form in avail infective endocarditis is caused by enterococcus. Now let's see the difference between two important type of endocarditis. Acute infective endocarditis and subacute infective endocarditis. Incidence of endocarditis is highest in mitral regurgitation for adult and ventricular septal defect for children. Least in atrial septal defect. Pathogenesis of infective endocarditis. Endocardial damage results in formation of thrombus to prevent bleeding. Due to transient bacteremia microorganisms adhere to the thrombus plug and starts proliferating. The thrombus gradually detaches and results in formation of emboli. The emboli may lodge in kidney, spleen and brain. Deposition of immune complexes causes glomerulonephritis and cerebral vasculitis. Moving on to clinical features. Commonly present with fever with night sweat, chills and rigors. Clubbing common in subacute bacterial endocarditis, splenomegaly. Due to splenic abscess, hemiplegia. Due to brain abscess. The other diagnosis of infective endocarditis is done by Duke criteria. It can be easily remembered by the mnemonic BEM, FIVIC. Major criteria. 1. B for blood culture. 3 blood samples drawn form 3 different site at 1 hour interval. 2 of 3 should positive for same organism. For Coxiella brunetti. 1 positive culture is enough. 2. B for echo. Vegetation should be positive, it should revel any one of like valve abscess. Perforation. Thrombotic mass on valve. And valve dehiscence. 3. M for new onset murmur. Diastolic regurgitant murmur. Minor criteria. F for fever greater than 38 degrees Celsius. I for IV drug abuser. V for vascular phenomenon. I for immunological phenomenon. C for culture results not meeting the major criteria. For definitive diagnosis of infective endocarditis. Two major criteria. Or. One major plus three minor. Or. Five minor criteria is required. For possible diagnosis. One major and one minor criteria or. Three minor criteria are required. Treatment. Ampicillin. Plus entamicin. Plus methicillin. Vancomycin. Can be used initially. After culture sensitive report. Appropriate antibiotic are given for three weeks. Finally, the complications of infective endocarditis. It is divided into 1. Cardiac complication and 2. Extracardiac complication. Extracardiac is further divided into renal, immunological, and embolic complication. Culture negative endocarditis. These are the condition where the blood culture is negative, such as prior antibiotic therapy, technical error, HASEC organism, fastidious organism, Coxiella, Chlamydia and Legionella. Right sided endocarditis non-infective endocarditis. Now let's see in detail about non-infective endocarditis. These are other diseases that causes growth in valves similar to infective endocarditis. 1. Libman Sachs endocarditis, endocarditis of SLE. The growth is present in under surface of the valve. 2. RHD. Growth is present in tip of cusp commissal end. 3. NBT, also called morantic endocarditis present in pancreatic carcinoma, AMLM3 and ovary cancer. Growth is present along line of closure. That's all for today, hope you have learned something new. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn post notification on. Now for today's question. Connect the pictures and derive a diagnosis. What is the gene mutated in this condition? Comment down your answers. We will catch up soon, until it's bye from Dr. Harrison.